Good morning, and welcome back to our Ask the Agronomist video series. I'm Kyla Watson here with Phil Long from A Screen Away. How's it going today, Phil? It's going great. Good, good. Enjoying the sunshine? Yes, yep. Yeah, it seems like in our virtual world, we're focused on the screen so much, but I do have a window and it is a beautiful day outside. So. Yes, perspective is key, isn't it? <laughs> a lot to be thankful for still. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well today we're gonna to be talking about um, a little bit of part two from a video we had done a few weeks ago, and that was talking about some of our research down there at Alexander, specifically the nitrogen um, nitrogen's result on soybeans. Yeah, one of, one of the things I keyed in on, and, and this wasn't, uh, you know, this is a little bit of high yield stuff that I'm gonna continue on into the future. I know we have a lot of customers uh, interested in this sort of thing. Um, this is not our only on-farm research that we do, obviously, but I thought it'd be interesting to throw this in here. It's something that's studied a lot because mm -hmm. the amount of nitrogen that soybeans uh, take up throughout the season, you know, a 60 bushel crop is going to take up over 300 bushel or three, excuse me, 300 pounds of nitrogen, which is a lot, a lot more than we fertilize corn for. So we require a lot from those uh, rhizobium nodules on the roots. So the reason that, that there's a lot of uh, research done on this topic is because of that. Is there any way we can supplement what the, the Brady rhizobium are doing for us that we can uh, see a bump in yield? So that's that's the simple uh, explanation of it. So what I did was I came in around V3, V4 early season. A little after they were already getting nodules, um, I came in and I put UAN down 32%, about 80 units. Um, we did end up seeing a response. I know several weeks back when we looked at it in the field, we did not see many nodules. So it did uh, do what we know is true and, and eliminate a lot of those nodules because I gave it an easy form of, of nitrogen and nitrate. So it, it, it did not need the nodules as much as the, the, the non-treated or untreated comparison next to it um, and didn't nodulate. Uh, it did show about just over a two and a half bushel increase. So we did see an increase although that's obviously not enough to pay for 80 units of, of 32%. So it was a it was really interesting to see some of the changes. Uh, I don't think we nailed it on the head in terms of seeing the yield bump that we hope, but it's one of those factors. And it's interesting to, to check out these different things that can go into high yielding soybeans. And obviously we had quite a year this year. <laughs> We've talked about right. that a lot. It was challenging. So that's, that's some of the reason too that uh, may have hampered some of uh, of the test, but overall, we may not have paid for the application, but it was a good learning experience. Which that's the beauty of on farm research. Yeah, exactly. You're not always gonna. You gotta sometimes you gotta take a little bit of a hit to learn. You know whether that's dropping a seeding rate below where you want to or feel comfortable. You gotta you gotta drop or you gotta go above or below in order to see the difference that it makes. Okay, so what should farmers do? Um, for those that are looking to advance their soybean yields, I guess, or what is the thing that's holding soybeans back? Sure, yeah. The, the thing that comes to top of mind, especially on fertility, we're focusing on fertility. Things that farmers can do this fall, obviously soil sampling, but pH comes to uh, the top every time. It's the base of the pyramid. You have to have pH right when it comes to soybeans because that affects not only nodulation, but also the nutrient availability. So. If, if you have pH is getting below 5859, those nodules, that, that bacteria that infects the roots are gonna struggle to do that. That association is not gonna happen as, as efficiently and you won't have enough <clears throat> nitrogen production for the soybean plants. On the other hand, the availability, you gotta remember if you're dropping a point, let's just say 6.5 down to a 5.5 pH, that's a 10 times increase in acidity in that soil. It may not seem like a lot to us to look at on a piece of paper, but to those plants that are living in, in that environment, uh, it's a big shift. And there's a lot more uh, metals that become more available and even toxic aluminum is, is one of the primary ones that become toxic at lower pHs. So keeping that uh, pH in check is, is huge in my opinion. You know, living in, in uh, we, you know, dry land country, most farmers aren't irrigating a lot. Uh, obviously the water in August is something that we can't control. And I will say when it comes to high yielding soybeans, that's the one thing that's always going to limit or hold uh, farmers back in our in our neck of the woods. But that would be that would be one we can't control. But the last thing I'd say that holds us back that we can control is pest pressure. I'm lumping a lot of it together, but 2020 has shown a lot of different challenges. Uh, and when it comes to soybeans, you know, we've talked talked a lot about the soybean options that we have available for herbicide options 
and thankfully it's getting even better next year. Um, but 2020 was not a good year for soybeans and, and weed pressure. There was a lot of water hemp out of control, a lot of other weeds that, that went out of control for a lot of reasons, poor canopy closure, you know, row spacing and things come into play. But all these things, any, any pest that hits a soybean throughout the season stresses it out and reduces that potential. So to me, you really got to watch it all season long, uh, along with all this fertility stuff, really add up to that full potential. Okay, so as farmers look to plan for 2021, what are some of your recommendations on specific factors that they could focus on? Sure, so number one would be potassium. I know I say that a lot and I don't want to demean the other nutrients, they're just as important. But if you look at potassium and how the soybean plant takes it up, once it hits reproduction, it's, it's taken up about three pounds of potassium per day. So it's really important. That's why it's critical to have that at the level that you need it at so that it has enough in the soil uh, available to the plant to take up. Phosphorus is just as important, but it takes it up over a slower, longer drawn out time period. So um, still important. Having all those in check is important. Once you have those in check and your pH obviously is first, uh, I would I would lean towards sulfur. You know, 10 to 15 pounds of sulfur up front, AMS or something like that that's available within a month or so, get it uh, some good sulfur to the plant it would, would be my next uh, high yielding thing to lean towards because sulfur and nitrogen both play a big role in terms of protein production in soybean plants. And as we know, soybeans and, and pr proteins, uh, protein production in soybean is huge. That's, that's all soybean is, is protein and, and oil. Uh, for the most part, it's over 60% the seed is. So requires a lot of nitrogen and a lot of sulfur, and both of those can leach to the soil. So with less sulfur deposition out there nowadays, um, that is one that's coming into play and, and showing up big in, in many areas in terms of needing additional sulfur, not just on the sandy. So, you know, the last thing I'd say, I get a lot of questions about this. I did some research on our home farm this year, our, our, my own farm, and, and uh, didn't see a response in terms of a foliar feed. Uh, it was early reproduction and there's there's different timings you can do it you can do it with a fungicide and so forth but there is some value to uh, micronutrients and and i say that cautiously because you have to have everything in line before you try that uh, but in terms of micronutrients we know that iron is huge in our part of the neck of the woods with idc and so forth putting something in furrow something that can uh, follow that soybean plant through its life cycle to provide a little extra especially early on and give it better vigor is important, but iron and, and <clears throat> manganese especially are two that play a big role in photosynthesis of the soybean plant. Uh, and, and that, especially since it's a light sensitive, light driven plant when it comes to reproduction, vegetative states is really important. The other one that I'd say is, is usually important to have in a mix, especially foliar would be uh, boron. Uh, boron plays a big role in terms of uh, flowering and keeping those pods on the plant um, and keeping as many pods, as many flowers as you can through that reproduction cycle. And it's, it's maybe it's a smaller nutrient. It's not one you want to spread uh, granular. Um, it can be toxic, but it's one that in a complete nutrient package, um, a foliar feed kind of situation is one that you want to add in there to, to help it in the, uh, early reproductive stages kind of time frame. So um, those, those would be my top things. Obviously, when it comes to micros, it's, it's tough. You know, you need, number one, like I said, pH. You need a soil sample. You need to know the di distribution of pH in that field. And if you get that corrected, that's your biggest advantage. Then you can work down the list on the smaller ones, get P and K in line, and then get to the micros. If you're uh, tissue testing and you see deficiencies in certain areas, that's when you spot check, tissue test and really dive into those spots and why they're giving problems. Okay, very good. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add this morning? No, I, I think that sums it up pretty well. Just, you know, giving farmers uh, an opportunity to think about fertility again, you know, this is the time of year when I'm focused on that because of soil sampling, but farmers should be too. This is a good time to think about it, a good time to plan for corrective measures, you know, with finances and everything. Uh, so if you haven't planned for that, um, you know, that's one of those things that we can control when it comes to corn and soybeans. It doesn't matter. That's one of those things that we have in our power to control. And although lime is kind of expensive, it seems like it, uh, you know, it does pay. Uh, variable, variable rate lime especially pays. And, and that's, you know, everything I just talked about is, is why, because it lines up everything in the plant to be healthy and high yielding all season.
Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Well, as always, Phil, thank you for your information and knowledge that you're sharing with us today. You're welcome. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Have a good day.